Okay guys, I uh, made a turkey a couple days ago and today we're going to can turkey soup. But let me show you what I've done. I just um, brought this in. Uh, it's been refrigerated all night. And what I did was I put the turkey carcass and any, we'll call it scrap meat, like the skin and all of that went in this pot. And I filled it with water. I put in the turkey brought drippings, everything, all of that went in there. Then I added, uh, cut up an onion, threw in some peppercorns, um, some sage, and um, kind of disappointed because the old farmer went to the grocery store and they said they haven't been getting any celery. So I had to use my dehydrated celery because I want the flavor in the broth. So I dumped that in there and I'm out of celery powder because I used that in other recipes. And I also uh, dumped in my dehydrated carrots that I had. And I threw in, I think, three or four cloves of garlic. So I know it looks bad. But what I'm getting ready to do now is pull out all the the bones and what have you and I'm going to pick all the meat off and I'll be back and show you what I have. Hey guys, I know it's going to look gross but I just I guess prepare if you ever do it. What I've got um, I went through I separated out the meat. I'm going to strain this broth, broth one more time so it's clear and this is the scraps the Onion, garlic, peppercorns, uh, what else is in there? Carrots, celery, of course the bones, the skin, all that stuff is in there. And what I did was I placed this strainer over a pot and at first dip, I, at first I took my big tongs and dipped out the bones and, you know, these, anything that I could get and cleaned that up. Then I put the big pot on the stove and heated it just enough to bring it back to liquid um, because you'll get that gelatin sometimes. Then I uh, ladled and then poured it through this bigger strainer and kind of did the, got the rest of it cleaned out of there. Now what I'm going to do is, um, well, let me show you. Okay, I have this big colander, whatever you call it, that happens to fit right inside of this stock pot. I'm going to put my, uh, and you've seen me do this before, one of my flour sack towels in. Or you can use cheesecloth. I've been doing this for so long and it works perfect for me. Um, because I, of course, wash it and redo it. And then I'm going to pour this broth back through that and say, get off any of the new or like, you know, you can see pieces in there. I don't mind that the, the sage or whatever that is is in there. But at the bottom, you get kind of a, I don't, for lack of a better word, kind of a sludge. So I'm going to do that now and we'll come back. Okay, guys, um, I've got everything ready to go and actually I put it in the jars because uh, I didn't want this video to go too long. We need to talk about my new canner. But let me do this right quick. I took the turkey. I think y'all heard me crying and whining about no celery but I'll get over it. Um, and you know how I am. I've got my car, my jars are washed and rinsed. I put in some turkey, carrots, and onion. And my broth tastes good, but it's kind of bland, I guess is the word. So I did go ahead for a quart, you put in one teaspoon of salt, and I went ahead and did that. Now I'm not gonna go into uh, great depth on a lot of this stuff, because I think I'm gonna do a video um, about the different uh, salts and methods of canning more, uh, the lids and all that. So, um, I have read my manual, which I recommend everybody do, 
when you get a new canner and actually I've read through it twice I just want to make sure um, my pressure canner says to put two to three inches of water in the bottom so I've done that I have it turned on now letting the water warm up I have not put my broth in my jars yet and you're not gonna I'm not gonna make you sit and watch me do that my broth is over here heating up in my uh, stock pot so the first thing that you do with uh, these all-american canners because it is a metal on metal um, uh, seal is you put a thin layer of preferably it says olive oil and I do have olive oil if you don't have olive oil it says you can use Vaseline so you take I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm just gonna go and it's the beveled edge let's see Here's the flat top, but there's a beveled edge where the metal's gonna touch. And you just put a thin coat of, of the um, olive oil on that to make sure that you get a good seal. So I'm gonna go now and fill my jars with broth, and then I'm gonna come back and we'll go over putting the jars in and putting the lid on and how you tighten and seal up these All-American canners. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, guys, I've got my uh, seven quarts of turkey soup in here. You probably can see the water steaming. That's because I set it down into hot water. Then we'll put the lid on, and there is a... I'll show you. I think I've showed you once, but there is a little arrow here. And there's a notch on the side of the canner. Those line up. So once you get it set on there, you might have to, you'll give it just a bit of a twist till it sets down. And also, I don't think, well, let me see here. There's little pegs here that come up underneath there. Okay, to fasten the lid on an All-American, there are these knobs that you turn. Now you don't do one at a time, you go opposite. So I'm gonna bring these up and tighten them down. And then I will go opposite again. We're going to go opposite again and bring tighten them down a little bit. And this one, there we go. I had to tighten down some. Then you're going to tighten down. Then go back again and give them one more hand tightening. Don't use a wrench, don't use any of that hand tighten them. That's to make sure that you have a good seal. Now, here's my vent, and I've got the uh, burner on high, and I'm going to wait till this begins to um, vent steam. And again, 10 minutes, it's got to vent a steady steam stream of steam for 10 minutes i don't think i'm ever going to get that right guys but anyway now like i told you i you never leave your pressure canner so i'll be cleaning up my kitchen it's a disaster area and i'll be cleaning that up where i can be right here with it and keep an eye on it and um, i'll be back after it has vented the steam Hey guys, it's the following morning, and um, I've just got quite a bit I need to get done, so I'm going to try to do this real quick. Um, today is, i got to bake a pecan pie and make puppy chow, so I don't know if I'm going to do a video. Anyway, I wanted to show you what I ended up with. In my canner, I tried to stack half pints. 
since it was the first time that I used it, I probably shouldn't have done it the first time. I think I could have done it, but it wasn't, the lid wasn't setting on there just right, and I was starting to get a little frustrated, so I just brought up my old canner, and I'll show you what I did in that. But, here's the bad news. Look at my poor canner. It was so pretty and shiny, and now it looks like a normal canner. <laughs> I did want to show you that, guys, because that is what it's going to look like. See this? I wanted to point that out, too. Don't take those labels off. There's so many warnings and, and uh, reminders for all of us. This is what I put in um, my new canner. I'm going to name my canner um, Cinnamon Girl, by the way. We all know why. And um, I want to show you how they come out. The This is very typical very what you can expect anytime you're doing like meats or whatever um, the water let's go look you can see it has a little bit of oil in it because of the siphoning action the lid works up and down and pulls out the air and what have you um, you may you may lose a little bit of liquid that's okay and sometimes your uh, jars are going to just kind of feel icky and here's one that went over a bit much these are the tattler lids they all sealed so what you do is you take your rings off and wash your jars I leave my rings off I realize some of you leave them on but I do recommend that you wash and dry your jars and lids very well before you put them back on so they don't rust now Let's go over and see what I did in my... Hey, this is what I did in my older canner. What? I had leftover broth. I tried to stack these half pint jars. I thought... Because my canner is made to stack... Uh, you can stack them two pints deep. But I had thought... And I might be able to do it. I, I, I don't know yet. I'll experiment after I have more practice. I had thought maybe I could get half pints on top and, and get them all canned that way. Um, it didn't work out. So, y'all know what I do. I'm not going to have an um, empty or half full canner. So, I did more beans. Now, I want to say, this is one of those things, the way I do my beans is not recommended. That is, they recommend that you... Pre-soak and pre-cook them before you can them. Well, guys, my beans have always turned out mushy. This is the way I like them. So, don't, uh, just another one of those things, do your research. Don't always do what I do or what I say, research. I'm only showing you what I do. Okay, guys, I'm going to get this put together really quick because, like I said, I got that pecan pie to make and I got to make puppy chow and get packed and ready to leave.